Hey everybody, welcome back. So today, I wanted to come down here and get started on another video about Niles. I was going to talk about handling and socialization with him, add another episode of the series on him. But to be, to be quite honest, I'm still, I'm still pretty disgusted. And <clears throat> I really can't with a clear conscience right now sit here and put on a happy face and, and work with my animals knowing that there's you know other people in this country that can't have these animals or that have to uh sit by and watch them all be killed um you know there, there are not too many things that really get to me this whole situation down there is really um it's been on my mind ever since it's happened um <clears throat> so my goal today um uh, mainly is i know i've put out a couple videos on this before knee-jerk reactions to it and just trying to get awareness out there you know a lot of details are missing a couple details were wrong uh, now there's a couple videos that have come out since then that are really stellar um, at explaining exactly what happened and explaining what we do moving forward one of those was put out on the Camp Keenan channel um, Keenan for those of you that don't know he's in Florida uh, he has some of these animals that <clears throat> are on the uh, restricted list down there. Uh, he has went through with the FWC, gotten all the paperwork, gotten everything in order, and he does a really good job of explaining kind of what's going on down there, what FWC did wrong, and <clears throat> what we need to do moving forward. And another one is uh, a channel called Tipping Scales. Uh, a fellow named John on there, I just run across his stuff not too long ago, put out a really good video kind of talking about moving forward. Um, he was a really well-spoken guy, and I was really impressed with that. So I'm going to link both of those videos in the end screen on this video. <clears throat> I'm also going to link them both. They're going to be the first two links in the description on this video. Uh, so I really encourage everybody, as um, soon as this video is over with, if you've got time, if not, make sure you do it later. Pull up this video, find the links. Uh, go on and listen to what Keenan has got to say about this. Uh, he's right there in the midst of everything in Florida, dealing with everything firsthand. And uh, it's really important that we all understand what's going on down there from his perspective. Uh, and again, John with Tipping Scales uh, does a really good job of addressing some things on there. And I really think everybody would benefit from watching that as well. Uh, so that's my main goal of this video. Now, my secondary goal probably not going to be very pleasant for a lot of people um you know so feel free to uh just go ahead and shut it off if you don't want to hear it um the fact of the matter is is um this whole thing that happened down there with florida fwc um we all own a part of that um this isn't something that just happened in a vacuum this isn't something that blindsided us that we didn't see coming <clears throat> um you know, U.S. Arc Florida has been warning us for a number of years. Uh, U.S. Arc National the same. Uh, they've both been warning us. You know, something like this is coming down the pipe. And uh, and it did. And, you know, when, when there's meetings going on in these states where they're trying to decide what the laws are going to be to regulate the animals that we get in such an uproar about them killing... And nobody shows up, except for maybe a handful of people and a rep from U.S. Arc, a rep from U.S. Arc, Florida, or something. Um, that doesn't bode well. Uh, which is which is part of the reason why I say we've got to own some of this. Um, you know, I've heard people say that there's you know like nine million reptile keepers or something like that, and I'm quite sure that number would expound exponentially if you go into exotic pets in general. Uh, birds, fish, reptiles, uh, exotic mammals, all of that stuff. I mean, there's millions and millions of people. And, you know, what are there? U.S. ARC memberships in the tens of thousands? Uh, I mean, it's just a drop in the bucket. There's a small handful of people that care enough to get involved that are carrying the rest of the exotic animal community on their backs. Um, and, you know, that's... And just like with any team, you know, you don't want to be the anchor. You don't want to be the one that everybody has to drag behind in order to make progress. 
<clears throat> you know, you need to be right beside carrying your part of the load. You need to be right beside, you know, pulling your oar just as hard as everybody else is. And that's how we stay, you know, it's how we maintain our position. Um, so, so one important part to point to make is, um, if you've got any kind of exotic pets, if you've seen the videos of what's going on down there, we've got two entities fighting for us, U.S. Ark National, U.S. Ark Florida. Okay, and it, you owe it to the community to get on, get a membership. It's not going to cost you anything, hardly at all. Um, you know, even if you're doing just a like a bronze membership with U.S. Arcs, what, 30 bucks a year or something? Um, it's not a big deal individually on you but it is a big deal cumulatively when we're working to avoid things like what happened in florida um and something else that i've heard a lot of lately i go through all of the comments on these videos i read every one of them um you know there's there's support for this cause from all across the globe um new zealand denmark holland um, Mexico, Canada, the UK, uh, there, there's, you know, probably another 10 more um, that I'm not thinking of right off of my head that I've heard from. People that aren't even in the United States that are getting on and they're signing up for U.S. ARC and, you know, making their voices heard. So if somebody from overseas can do it, you damn sure can too. Um, now, uh, that, that kind of leads me into the point of um, I hear a lot of people complaining about yeah our government sucks and you know the government doesn't care and the government this and the government that um and in the same breath you hear people talking about their first amendment rights and their second amendment rights and, and all of these things um guys the government is you it's me if the government's jacked up, the reason they're jacked up is because of us. Okay, you, you guys should have seen this in full display with this thing that's going on down in Florida right now. This happened. This motivated people to educate themselves on what was going on and to make their voices heard. We've shut down email servers. We've shut down voicemail servers. We shut down social media for a while. We've clogged everything up with so much correspondence that it's gotten global attention. It's hit major networks. You know, this wasn't the news stations that just heard about this somewhere and said, well, this is interesting. Let's go check this out and see what's going on. You know, they didn't do that of their own accord. It's because of you. It's because of everybody that sent letters, because of everybody that made phone calls. It's because of everybody that took an interest in educating themselves, becoming part of the democratic process, making their voices heard. That's how change gets affected. Um, you know, th th this country is unique. Our government here in this country is unique in the world. And it's lasted for over two centuries. You know, democracies, the heart of any democracy is in an educated electorate. Now, you guys have seen over the last few years, particularly, when divisiveness and, and hate and prejudice and all that stuff starts to boil over and we get half the population going to war with the other half of the population and families get ripped apart over politics and everything else. So this doesn't make any difference whether you're right or left. Okay. What we deal with in those situations is we create a power vacuum. And this is, this is something that happens overseas, where when a government goes away, the strongest hand comes in and takes over. And they take over in their own self-interest. And what's going on here in the States is we are too busy fighting with each other. And while we're fighting with each other, the strongest hand is coming in. They're continuing to manipulate everybody, what you think, what you watch. They want to keep us fighting each other. While they go in and they have their little power grabs so that they can continue to tell everybody what to do for their own benefit. Um, if the government is screwed up, it's our fault. It's the citizens of the United States. We've dropped the ball. 
we have got to stop fighting each other. We got to stop listening to dumbasses like Tucker Carlson and people that are getting sued for three quarters of a billion dollars because they're lying to you and you're believing it and going to war with family members over it. It's ridiculous, guys. <clears throat> it, it's got to stop. This right here that's going on in Florida is demonstrative of what we can do, of what we can impact, and how we can protect ourselves if we throw our differences to the curb and we work together, we educate ourselves on what's going on, and we participate in the process. Everybody in the country needs to keep the pressure on FWC. If you wrote one letter last week, write one this week. If you made a phone call last week, make one this week. If you're watching a news report about what's going on down there, get down in the comments and say something. Um, you know, anything that comes across about this, say something on it. Make your voice heard. Don't just sit back and cry that the government's mean. It's our responsibility to make sure that it's fair. And the only way we do that is by participating. Um, I cannot begin to express how important this is. And guys, with everything that's going on in Florida right now, if we make an impact there, and we make changes there, and there's ramifications for things that have happened there, how many people are going to want to follow suit if they see this and they know that if they try doing the same thing that they did there, they're going to get the wrath of the entire community coming down on them. They don't want to deal with that. We need to let them know that these things are unacceptable and they're not going to fly. Now, that brings me to another point. <clears throat> I've had to delete so many comments off my videos because people talking about their guns and what they would do if somebody came to their door trying to take their animals and they'd have to do that over my dead body. That's stupid. Okay? I, I'm, you're talking to a combat vet here. Okay? So, to believe me, I'm not a pacifist. I understand anger and I understand retribution and I understand wanting to stand my ground. I also understand that all violence is is a failure of intellect. It's a failure to communicate. When you're not smart enough to figure out another way to manage something, the end result of that always falls back into violence. That's not saying that everybody that is violent is stupid or they don't have the intellect to avoid it. Sometimes people have to train every single day to be really good at violence. And, um, because there's people that are going to resort to it. And that's another thing to keep in mind, folks. You know, if you're talking about defending your animals in that way, instead of the intelligent way, instead of the right way, just understand that there's a lot of people with badges that train every single day, and when they're not training, they're just sitting back wishing somebody would. The whole time I was in the military, I was one of those people. I trained and trained and trained. And when I wasn't training, I was out thinking about worst case scenario everywhere I went. And one recurring theme in my mind is, I wish somebody would. I'm training for a reason. So you guys really need to think hard about things like that before you start making threats to somebody because not only does it make us look bad, I don't care how good you think you are guys, that's a no-win scenario. That's just the facts. It's not a matter of how tough you are or are not. How well armed you are or are not. Don't do it. Don't put that stuff out there. Like I said, we've got to own some of this. And we've got to make changes to uh, how we do things. What we've been doing. If we want to make things better. So... We've got people that are in our corner fighting for us. 
We've got people on the front lines fighting for us, in front of state senates, in front of Congress. And you're blowing more money every day on your uh, coffee with 15 word names than you're willing to chip in to fight this stuff. You know, if you're not going to be in the fight, I mean, how much right do you have to complain if we lose? Everybody needs to be involved. Everybody needs to be behind these people that are down there fighting for us. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of money and we have a lot of people. So if all of us do a little, it equals a lot and it gives these guys the teeth that they need to go down there and prevent dumbass FWC people from getting power hungry and wanting to do dumb shit that wrecks people's lives. So, like I said, I'm gonna try and put those two videos that I mentioned in the end screen. Make sure you go check them out. Keenan, particularly, gives a really good rundown of everything that happened out there, what he was dealing with, and um, John goes into a little bit more about what we're doing about it. Um, if you're not already supporting one of the ARCs, both of the ARCs preferably, get on and do it. That information is always down in the description of every one of my videos. If you find one of my videos that doesn't have a US ARC link down there, let me know. I'll make sure to put it in. Um, and, you know, I know it's been a pretty, pretty blunt video. Um, and to everybody out there, that has been participating, that's been helping, that has been keeping their heads about this. Thank you guys so much. We need to set the example. And um, you guys are doing that. And everybody that's been participating so far has made a lot of things happen and it's gotten a lot of attention and it's working. Um, we've gotta keep it up. We gotta keep the pressure on. Now I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna have a coffee. I'm gonna get this video edited. I'm going to uh, maybe go for a walk in the woods behind the house. And kumbaya and goose fraba and all that other stuff. See if I can get myself collected to start uh, getting back into the regular programming for our channel. Um, Cause we got other things that we need to be talking about. But right now, yeah, there's a couple of those videos that are really important that we needed to address and a couple other things that we need to talk about too. Um, so you guys have an outstanding day. Continue doing your part. Continue kicking ass. And we'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, Help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics.